Today, we are going to sit down and we are going to have a little style chat on how to look stylish and classy as a plus size woman. Hi, my name is Aralia. I'm a personal stylist. My passion in life is to help plus size women look and feel their absolute best. I believe that everyone deserves to look and feel beautiful regardless of size or age. With this video, I want to kick off what I am going to call style chats. I'm going to talk with you a little bit about some style dilemmas or style questions or style topics that I think are important for you to hear. Today's topic is going to be how to be a stylish and classy plus size woman. This applies to you regardless of what your personal style is, whether you classify yourself as a boho, as a classic, whatever. Make sure you stay tuned to the very end though, because the last three tips that I talk about are the ones I think that are going to be really life changing. So stay tuned for those. I'm going to start out with the styling tips first, with the things that are the most obvious, uh, the easy ways that you can tweak your style in order to make sure that you always appear stylish and classy. Mind the small details of your outfit. So by that, I mean, tucking your shirt in, wearing a belt, rolling up your sleeves, all of those types of little things that you can do to take your outfit to another level, to dress it up a little bit, to make it a bit more intentional, you know, things that you do specifically to tweak your outfit, to just give it a personal touch, give it your personal touch. Doing these little tweaks will go a really, really long way in projecting that image of polish and class and style because you're not just wearing your clothes, you're actually doing little things to them, tweaking them and little zhuzhes that you do to your outfits to make them a little bit special. I just mentioned rolling up your sleeves. That's a big one to me, I think. When you're wearing any kind of a long sleeve shirt, especially Especially when you are petite and plus size, rolling your sleeves up actually serves more than just a styling purpose. It's also a way to help provide an illusion of slenderness and of height. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being plus size, not at all, but rolling up your sleeves is a small little tweak that you can do to give yourself that illusion of not just polish, but of being more slender and being more tall. And it's because you're focusing on one of the smallest parts of your body when you roll up your sleeves. You are showing off your wrists, you're showing off your hands, and that will give an illusion of of height and slenderness because the eye sees that smallest part and it will be deceived into thinking that you are more slender and that you are taller than you actually are. When you're keeping your outfit simple, you are essentially not causing a lot of chaos for the eye. When someone sees you and if you're wearing something very simple, the person that's looking at you is going to immediately think polished, pulled together versus if you have like a really strong maximalist style where you're wearing a lot of colors and a lot of patterns, it can create a sense of chaos. You're not going to give off that polished look. And I know that with certain personal styles, Style types putting on a lot is a part of the look and that's fine but try and find something cohesive about the look in order to give your look a bit more polish and a bit more coherence what I mean by that is you can mix your prints if you want to but make sure that the colors maybe are a little bit more subdued or if you do want to do really bright happy colors then maybe you just stick to one or two so that you can keep things as simple as possible and that's really going to give off an air of polish, even if you have a maximalist style where you like to wear a lot of color and you like to wear a lot of things and have a lot of things going on. When you simplify things, while you can still execute that maximalist style, find one or two colors to do it with instead of multiple colors, because then that just lends to the chaos and it's really going to take away from that looking polished and pulled together. I do a lot of trend videos here on my channel and while I talk about a lot of trends also when I do hauls and things like that, 
The goal is not for you to have a 100% trend-led wardrobe because if you do that, you're not gonna have any cohesion. What I'm saying is that you can incorporate one or two trendy pieces here and there. If you wanna be stylish, if you wanna be polished, if you wanna have this timeless air about you, go for minimal trends. Look at the trends and look at them under the lens of how is this gonna keep me looking modern? Because you could, look dated even though you are wearing a lot of classic pieces if you don't incorporate something that is of the moment in your wardrobe so that you don't put off that stuck in a time warp kind of look. In not following trends, what I would say is you do want to find timeless pieces and you can find these timeless pieces no matter what the personal style that you have. For instance, uh, boho, the boho look is all about combining things and having a very kind of like free spirit type of an aesthetic. And when you are doing boho, a timeless classic piece is finding a really cool belt from the 70s, let's say, or maybe a fringed jacket or a fringed purse or something like that that is been around since the 70s. That's what, like 50 years ago? And it's still relevant today. Every type of persona within personal style has its timeless pieces. So consider investing in those timeless pieces. Shop smartly when you are out and about and know what is going to be something that has been around for a long time and will continue to be around for a long time. And that really resonates with you. That really speaks to who you are as a person. Now, I know a lot of us seek to be comfortable because I know that my particular um, demographic here on YouTube, a lot of you are retired and you maybe are looking for comfort. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be comfortable no matter how you dress or how old you are. Comfort is important. What I would say though is before shopping for comfort, shop for style and then find things that are stylish and that are comfortable. If you're looking at a blazer and you think, no, that's not gonna be comfortable, well, maybe take a look at a blazer in a ponty knit instead. You're gonna get that blazer cut, but it's gonna be in a really nice stretchy fabric so that you can look stylish and you can be comfortable at the same time. I really like Talbot's blazers actually for that reason because they do have a particular blazer that they sell that is actually in a really nice stretchy ponty knit, but the construction construction is really, really good and it moves very easily with you and they have them in a variety of sizes. They are truly, in a lot of cases, they are truly size inclusive because they even have petite plus. You want to keep comfort in mind, but you really want to put style at the front and then go for comfort after that. When you add accessories, you are really putting the icing on the cake. So putting on a pair of earrings, putting on a necklace, maybe some rings and bracelets, a really nice watch. A pair of sunglasses will go miles in giving you a stylish appearance. Another way of adding style is by adding a scarf to your look. You don't see a lot of people wearing scarves. If you wear a little neck scarf with your shirt, then that's gonna look really beautiful. It's gonna be very stylish. You're gonna stand out and so it is the those little tweaks that you can make to give yourself a little bit more style, a little bit more class, and definitely a lot more polish. The fit and cut of your clothing is very, very important. You don't want to walk around in things that don't fit well. You want to make sure that if your pants are too long, that you get them hemmed. If your shirt sleeves are too long, maybe you have them adjusted or you roll them up in order to camouflage the fact that they fit you a little bit long. Um, you want to make sure that things don't fit too tight and also that they don't fit too loose. Both of those are going to give the illusion of looking heavier than you actually are because when you wear something that's too tight everything is bulging and it just makes you look like your clothes don't fit which 
they don't. If you're wearing clothes that are too loose on you, you also give that illusion of looking bigger and it doesn't give off that air of style and class because people who dress stylishly always make sure that the fit is perfection. That's really what gives them that style advantage. That's what makes them stand out when you see somebody that is very stylishly dressed and they're wearing clothing that fits them like a glove, you're like, wow, that person really took time to dress well. It is very much on the subconscious level that you perceive these things about people who have style is when their clothing fits them really, really well. They just look very pulled together. They just look like they've got themselves together. And it's a very simple thing to achieve. Just take things to the tailor if they don't fit quite right and have that tailor adjust to your body, whether that's a gapping waistband, maybe a shirt that doesn't fit quite right. So maybe you want to have some dart sewn in anything like that. Those types of things really help you to stand out and will help to make you be that stylish person that you want to be. The stylish woman will always take into account what fabrics her clothing are made of. It's not just about looking at the quality of the piece. It's also looking at the fabric content of the piece. You always want to strive for natural fibers. Polyester is plastic and any variation of polyester is plastic, but you can find some polyesters out there that are actually quite wearable, like the Ecovera, um, polyesters, um, you've got tensile, you know, you've got different new formulations or new permutations of polyester. I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, you have some polyesters that are a little bit more eco-friendly and are a little bit easier to wear. Really, you want to strive to find the most, you know, natural fibers. So cotton, linen, cotton and linen blends, because when you blend cotton into linen, it actually helps to decrease or to minimize the amount of wrinkling that happens. You've got silk, you've got cashmere, you've got merino wool and wool. Any of those can be blended and will really take the best aspects of each in the blend. Any of those types of fabrics and any blends with those fabrics are always going to be your best option. And the reason that they help you to look more stylish and classy is because they just look and wear better than something that is made of acrylic or nylon or polyester. Strive for those natural fibers because they are going to hold their, their shape well. They're gonna sit on the body a lot better. They are going to last a lot longer and they're just really good. I love, love, love it. Especially now that we're entering summer, you want to stick with the cotton and linen and even silk blends like a silk cotton or a linen cotton blend. Those are all really, really good blends. I would say even a linen rayon blend is okay. And then during the winter, you, uh, you know, stick with like the cashmeres and the wools and things like that. You could feasibly wear cashmere in the warmer seasons if it's not too terribly warm where you live. Um, it's a good transitional fabric, I think. It's very self-regulating, so it keeps you warm and it keeps you cool if it doesn't get too hot. I've got a couple of points that I wanted to touch on as far as physical appearance, because I think that your physical appearance has a lot to do with projecting that image of stylish and classy and polished. The first thing is to have good posture, and I work on this all the time myself. Make sure that you are trying to achieve good posture. There are a lot of different little exercises that you can do in order to get good posture. There's one that's really, really simple where you just kind of, you hold your arms up for 10 seconds and then move the position 10 seconds and then out 10 seconds. I'm holding my notebook in my other hand, so that's why I can't do both hands. Um, out for 10 seconds and then kind of, um, uh, down here, you know, have your elbow down here. And it's kind of like you make a Y, a U, a T and a W. That's kind of the way that I see it. So there is that little exercise that is perfect for working on your posture and a lot of others. You can find them on YouTube, on Instagram. If you're doing any kind of work to help your posture, that's a good thing because that's always gonna make you look stylish. You're always gonna look really nicely polished when you stand up straight, you tuck your uh, pelvis in a little bit, you hold your uh, gut in, your, your, your core in a little bit and your shoulders are back. There's it, that that will instantly make you look 
pull together and polish just like very, very quickly. It just takes a little bit of exercise, a little bit of practice in order to get there, but you absolutely can do that. And uh, it also gives you a boob lift, you know, an instant boob lift. So <laughs> making sure that you've got good posture is so incredibly important. We can instantly look very, very stylish and polished. And the other thing I wanted to touch on with regards to appearance is grooming. Making sure that your hair is looking as good as it possibly can, regardless of what kind of hairstyle that you choose to have. Before I fully started, you know, using a curling iron all over my hair, I have naturally curly hair. My hair would dry natural. And I started doing one little thing that just completely made me look so much better. I mean, people commented right away and that was taking a few minutes and using a curling iron on the front part of my hair. So doing little tricks like that to make sure that your hair is groomed, also taking really good care of your skin. If you don't like wearing makeup, that's fine. You don't have to, but just making sure that your skin is just the best that it can be using products that suit your skin type the best goes a long way to helping you look styled and polished. Now, if you do like wearing makeup, then what I would say is stick with very natural makeup. That's not to say that don't wear makeup, but just keep it low key because you don't want people to see the makeup first. You want people to see you first. The makeup should be enhancing your inner and outer beauty. A stylish woman knows the importance of taking care of her clothes, of treating her clothing with respect. One of the ways that you can do this is to organize your closet, to make sure that everything is hanging and hanging in some kind of logical order to you. Whether that be hanging things by type, hanging things by color, hanging things by color and type, however it is that you want to do it, but organizing your closet and having things hanging in a way that makes it easy for you to see what you have. If you can't tell what you have, and if you've got clothes that are crumpled up on the floor and just here and there and everywhere, you're not gonna know what you've got. You're not gonna be able to pull together really beautiful outfits because you really can't see it all. It's important to make sure that you've got things orderly and that you are treating your clothing with respect because if they're crumpled on the floor, they're gonna get all wrinkled and it's just gonna be a real hassle, right? So just make sure that you've got your closet organized in a way that makes sense to you so that that way getting dressed becomes so much easier. Take care of your sweaters, your knitwear, depill them. Of all of the types of clothing that we have, knitwear tends to pill and that really makes it look a little bit aged and it just makes it look kind of, you know, just not not very well kept and not very stylish. Also, if you've got anything that requires mending or anything that requires alterations, make sure to get that taken care of. The sooner, the better. I've got a couple pairs of pants right now that are in holding because I need to get them hemmed. So that's something that I've got to put on my to-do list. So make sure that you're taking care of all of these things. And then the last thing I'll say on this is that you always want to steam or iron your clothes before you wear them if they have wrinkles. I feel like sometimes I'm a professional clothing steamer at times because I get things in from all of these retailers and I steam on a regular basis. Two or three times a week, I'm steaming something. It's a habit now for me. I won't wear something if it's all wrinkled up. I'll take a few minutes and give it a quick steam to get all the wrinkles out and then I can wear it because nothing brings a look down like being wrinkled. You look so unkempt. You do not look stylish or polished in the least. You look like you're not taking good care of yourself, that you just don't care about yourself enough to take the time to make sure that your clothing is presentable in that way. The last three tips that I have for you are the ones that I said were life-changing. I am calling this the inside work when it comes to being stylish and polished. Know your personal style. Whether you do the three-word method or you're just using the style personas method or you're just using your gut and, and de determining what your personal style is, then know it and 
understand it and make sure that you're aligning to it because if you're dressing outside of your personal style, you're not gonna feel yourself. You're not gonna feel good in your clothing. You're not gonna feel like you are representing yourself in the best way possible. So knowing your personal style and honoring it is the, the very first thing to do. And it doesn't happen quickly. It does take some introspection and it does take some time. It took me a good two or three years to really solidly nail down my personal style. But during that time, I was kind of going in that direction and going in that direction and yes you might make a mistake every now and again but still knowing your personal style is what is going to make you your most stylish and classy self regardless of what that personal style is as for what i like to follow for personal style i'm a big fan of the three word method i think that alison bornstein was brilliant in coming up with this three word method it really really simplifies finding your personal style i do have a video that i posted talking about the three word method i will be sure to have it linked here in the cards as well as in the description bar down below so that you can watch it after you're done with this video if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. The stylish woman really does have a good grasp on what her personal style is and dresses accordingly. She rarely ever deviates from her personal style because she knows that if she does, she's not going to be her best self. She's not going to be putting her best foot forward and she's not going to feel her best self because that's really what matters is how do these clothes make you feel? Because clothing has a direct correlation with how you feel. If you're not feeling so good about yourself, that comes through in what you wear. If you're feeling really great about yourself, that comes through in what you wear. So knowing your your personal style and staying true to that personal style is what all stylish women do. Then we have got developing a signature style and I included this. It is similar but different from your personal style. Your personal style is kind of like the broad stroke here and developing a signature style are the detail strokes. By signature style I'm talking about the quintessential look. Like say for instance you're shopping and you come across something that one of your your friends might wear and you say, oh, that is such a, a, an Aralia piece. When you look at it and you know, because they have got a signature style, there is a certain set of clothing and a certain outfit or outfits that they wear on the regular that really define who they are or what their personal style is. That's what I mean by a signature look. It's those pieces and outfits that you have that define who you are that are almost like a uniform that you throw on and you look pulled together. Let's use a couple of examples. You're going out to run errands and so you throw on a pair of jeans, a t-shirt, maybe a necklace, maybe a, your Adidas Sambas or something like that, and a blazer. That is the running around town look. You have a last minute invitation to a really nice restaurant for dinner. So you wear a nice pair of trousers, maybe a silk cami, and a really nice blazer, a pair of heels same bits of clothing. That uniform translates to a multitude of scenarios. So that's what I mean by defining your signature style. Have a uniform, have a look that you can fall back on regardless of the situation. And that is what your signature style is. Having that signature style means that you will always look stylish no matter what the situation is. And I can guarantee you that all stylish women have got a couple of uniforms that they keep in their back pockets for those situations that they go to again and again and again. And then the last one is the one I think that is probably um, one of the more challenging ones for a few different reasons, and that is to know your body type and honor that body type. What I see in personal styling, you know, when I work with clients, I get a lot of clients that are like, I want to look like this but their body type is completely the opposite of what this is. We assign fruit to it, we assign shapes to it, we assign letters to them, but honestly, the school of thought for me, as far as body type goes, is not a shape or a fruit or a letter, it's actually the frame of the body. And honoring what your skeletal structure is. Regardless of how much weight you have on your body, your skeletal structure, your skeleton is not going to change. And so you dress in relation to your body frame. 
not to the flesh that you have sitting on it. I look at it from the perspective of how clothing sits on the body. When I trained as a personal stylist, that was the approach that I was taught is to work in harmony with your body type, not work against it. I am taking a deeper dive into that right now. If you want me to do a video on body types and my perspective on body types and how to dress different body types, then let me know in the comments down below. I will do that video for you because it's actually very interesting and it has nothing to do with a letter of fruit or a shape. <laughs> it has to do with how clothing sits on your body and then, you know, how you layer your personal style over that. So, um, yeah, let me know in the comments at the end of the day, it's honoring your body type because when you dress in harmony with your body type, that is when you look the most stylish. That is when you are really honoring who you are and what you are, you know, what the body that you have is. I always have, have strived to look at style and fashion in that way, you know, of what's going to look best on me without me having to finagle a different body shape or a different body type, um, because you're never going to be happy if you do that. I know I'm being very vague here because it's really, it, it's its own video, but really honoring that body type, honoring your shape and dressing in accordance to your shape will always give you the best results. You're going to feel more comfortable in your clothing. You're going to feel more comfortable in your skin and you're going to exude that style and that polish that you have, that you're seeking. If you're interested, in learning a little bit more about style for plus size women, then I will leave you with a couple of videos here for you to continue watching. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I truly appreciate it. And I hope to see you in those videos. Bye.